and a very good day to you. Welcome to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. My name is Father Joseph Campo. I'm the rector of St. John's Episcopal Parish in South Salem, New York. So whether you were a member of St. John's Parish or of St. Paul's Chapel in Vista or St. Andrew's in Hartsdale, I understand there are members who are worshiping with us from there, or friends of mine and from Canada and from England who have also joined in this celebration, and wherever you are, welcome. And I hope these uh, online liturgies will be an experience of prayer, uh, of your being spiritually fed, and an opportunity to be in the presence of God wherever you are, even if you cannot be in a house of worship for the next several weeks as we work our way through this epidemic. I want to also let you know that on Wednesday evenings, uh, we have a conference call and a telephone evening prayer that we have set up. And if you're interested in that, um, I invite you to go to our website or go to the parish email information that you'll be given, and you can uh, follow along there. And um, just to let you know, we have been helping out the Katona Food Pantry over the course of these weeks. We have food bought by our parishioners, and they place it in the outside bin that is available 24-7 to anyone in need of food. And when, uh, what I do is I bring extra food down to the Katona Pantry on a regular basis, um, but there's always some food available for those in need. So please feel free to make use of this if you need to. Finally, I'd love to know who you are, especially if you're visiting, uh, so to speak, um, and searching. If you're not a member of this particular parish, contact our parish by email. Let us know who you are. Let us know how we can better serve you, what you're looking for in terms of being spiritually fed at this time. Thank you, God bless you, and welcome to our liturgy. And good day, everyone. This is the second Sunday of Pentecost. This is June 14th, or whatever day you're following. You may not know this, but this is the fourth take of the beginning. So I'll try to get this right. 
If you have a book of common prayer, please turn to page 355 and together let us pray. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As a special hymn of praise this morning, for those of you who have a prayer book, if you turn to page 90, and we will pray Canticle 13 as our song of praise. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness, Administer your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you in person soon. The first reading is from the book of Exodus. When the people of Israel had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. For those of you who have either the Book of Common Prayer, if you turn in the Psalms to Psalm 100, or if you're following with the uh, insert that was emailed earlier this week. Let us pray Psalm 100 together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Call upon his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his faithfulness endures from age to age. And now we'll hear the second reading proclaimed. A reading from the fifth chapter of Romans, beginning at the first verse. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. 
And not only that, but we also boast in our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. passage from the Gospel this week is taken from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming good news of the kingdom and, and curing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, the Ta James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, proclaim good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if they do this any longer, and this is certainly not meant to be disrespectful. Um, well, those who study for ministry tend to be a very interesting group of people when they gather among themselves in seminary. Our, my generation was certainly no different. And there was um, part of our life each week, in addition to the regular Eucharistic services and morning prayer and evening prayer and spiritual talks and guidance and everything else, one night during the week, we would have a spiritual talk, and there would always be a person who was not one of our faculty. Uh, it might be a visiting scholar who, was, who happened to be um, giving a lecture at the university. It could be a parish priest who was visiting, or a bishop visiting, uh, one of his particular people studying for ministry. It could, it could be almost anyone. Among ourselves, we used to refer to this as amateur night. All right, The real professionals that we dealt with weren't preaching at us. So, I'll give you a story from one of those amateurs. Uh, he was a professor of Christianity. He was a chaplain at a major university at the time. Um, I will not mention the, time, the name of the university, but it was Duke. And he tells the story of when he was a very, very young scholar and priest. Um, he was apparently, now remember, if I'm in, the, in studying for ministry in the early 70s, He's relating to us something that happened in the late 50s, maybe the early 60s. So it happened quite a while, even before we heard the story. And he tells the story about his own 
sort of spiritual moment of transformation of how he dealt with people and how he lost a lot of the arrogance that he says was a part of his normal day-to-day -day existence. He says he was crossing over the quadrilateral and uh, apparently there is this major place uh, in, on the campus of Duke, I don't know it, um, but he, he just described it very vividly. And he said there were the whole group of, of students, mostly young men, but not all, they were celebrating something. He wasn't sure what. Maybe it was the victory of a game. Maybe it was the beginning of a holiday, a break. Um, they were loud. They were boisterous. They were disrespectful. They were arrogant. Probably many of them had imbibed of more than enough uh, sufficiently for themselves of adult beverages. Um, remember, the drinking age back in the day was 21, legally anyway. Um, and he was just disgusted by what he saw. He looked down his nose at them. For, this, for him, this was debauchery. This was the worst of American culture, all encapsulated on one campus. And he ended up going back to his room, as was his usual, and uh, decided to pray evening prayer. And what was the scripture passage that he had to reflect on that particular evening? Nothing other than the gospel I just read. Jesus looked at the crowds, and he had compassion on them, for he saw them as like being sheep without a shepherd. And it was sort of a transformational moment for him in terms of what it means to be shepherd and what it means for all of us really being God's sheep, to use that metaphor. So what we're told is that after teaching and preaching and healing in all these various villages up north in the Galilee, Jesus was becoming very impressed by the condition of the people he walked among. He saw them as they really are. He saw us as we really are, harassed and hopeless and lost. And he was moved with compassion. This Jesus who healed, who brings good news about God, whom he does not address with a formal title, he calls God Father. This Jesus who is a proclaimer of what people need to hear. A teacher who doesn't spend a lot of time arguing about theological certainties or the meaning of various words within the scriptures but speaks and demonstrates and lives the joy and intimacy with God, something we all need and we all should crave. This Jesus who's a healer, who spent more time healing the sick and feeding the hungry and being with those whose hearts were ripped apart with sorrow, with those who were oppressed within that culture, than he did talking about God talk. He was moved to compassion. And this Jesus is still moved to compassion by the world's pain and its sickness, and its blindness, and its prejudices, and its sorrows. A world that is hungry. Hunger for physical food, lest we forget that reality. Hungering for justice, hungering for hope. Hungering because we are satisfied when others have so little. Hungering and looking at us, seeing us as what we are, bewildered, looking for meaning. And yet he has compassion on us. This is the Jesus who called those closest to him and said, you know what? It's time now for you not only to listen, it's time for you to do. And he sends them out. Were they prepared? God knows. Probably not. Prepared to preach, to prepare to heal. But what's important is I want you to hear your name in the list of the twelve. Not just Matthew and the tax collector or Thaddeus or Jude or Judas or Peter, put your own name in there. We bear the name of Christ. We are the called and the sent. We are the laborers sent for the harvest. We are to incarnate a vocation from Jesus Christ, not just to try to uh, impersonate him, but imitate him as he taught, as he lived, because we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit from the day we were baptized and this means we have to see others as Christ saw them and minister to others as Christ ministered to them and be willing to understand that all of us have been redeemed from our sinfulness. We only need to open our hearts and open our souls and accept that as we reach out to others and be with others who have to deal with their self-destructive sins just as we have to deal with our own. And we do so without condensation, but with commitment and with charity. Jesus saw crowds and had compassion. An older translation in a spiritual writing once said, Jesus looked at the harvest as a, quote, field unto harvest of shepherdless souls. 
And the world still remains that way. And when we put ourselves in a relationship with Christ, as we remember that we are filled with God's Holy Spirit, that's just a nice fancy way of saying we are a people primarily first of prayer and then of action. Our first duty as would-be disciples to pray, to place ourselves in the mind and heart of Christ so that we can see as he saw and love as he loved and served as he served. That we see everyone as a child of God, blessed with dignity, and that I do not need to hear that any government or any philosophical system or any institution or any structure bestows upon any person dignity or rights. They come from being a child of God. Let that sink in. Prayer lets us open our eyes to see everyone as God sees us. Prayer forces us to open our ears to hear God calling us to do what must be done. But the changes have to start with me first. Dare I condemn anyone else? That I must, with humility, continue the incarnation of Christ into the world. A world that is desperately in need of shepherding because we are a world filled with hopelessness. So be imitators of Christ. Be teachers. Be preachers. Be healers. Offer good news. I want you to hear the prayers of, of the opening prayer that I prayed before. Take it to heart and don't just delete it when you delete the readings for the day. But go back and listen. Keep, Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love. That's where we need to start from. That through your grace, we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To be church, to be witnesses, to proclaim his truth with boldness and administer God's justice with compassion. We're not part of the Twelve. We have been sent. The world is in need. And the need, you know as I do, is urgent. Amen. For those who have a prayer book on page 358, let us profess what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world for our Bishop Andrew, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. 
I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Those suffer because of the color of their skin. Pray for those in need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find him and be found by him. I ask your prayers for all who have died because of this virus or they were taking care of those who caught COVID. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially those who walk for justice and peace, whom we remember today. Pray that they may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. We continue to hold in prayer all members of our parish or those associated with our parish whom we've been praying for. For Daniel Reardon, Elise Abkin Brandt, Kelly Ross, Marjorie Jean Michelle, Narissa Joyner, Valerie Skrelia, Christopher Skayen, Elena Aristedi, Ellie Levitt, Aaron Levitt, John LaFata, Barbara Thompson, Kristen Smith, Kimberly Bruin, Caitlin Bruin, Chris Kanechi, Kyler Tompkins, Jackson Shabbats, Paul DeMore, Christopher Beckett, Maya Bissonette, Brittany Jordan. You've also been asked to please hold in prayer Newt Roto, Orlando Correa, Diana Brockway Sutherland, Eric Follett, Michael Appy, Brother Rick, Susan Atkin. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer, send us in common mission, that we and the whole of creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you. Hello, St. John's Parish. We certainly miss you all and look forward to seeing everybody together again soon. All our best. Yep, everyone be safe. Look forward to being able to uh, rejoin our church family and uh, just catch up on the last three months of your lives. Many blessings. Take care.
I, as always, I'd like to thank the people who have agreed to give up their time and to assist in this particular liturgy by reading um, our, our readers today. You probably recognize Bill Deichler, who I hope will be, who's more than whose voice will be inserted into this liturgy by the miracles of technology that I do not understand. Our second reader was Susan Apkin, and the voice of the person leading us in prayer was Juliet Stemple. Uh, for those of you who may have guessed last week's readers, I did not announce, I simply forgot, but I want to thank both Liliana Carey and Camille Carey, who read the very long reading from, from Genesis, Patrick Bates, who read over the longest distance, his reading comes to us from Australia, and Barbara Appy, who led us with the prayers of the people. To all of you who have been assisting, I offer my most sincere thanks. Um, it's a way we gather in prayer despite our distance. So let us proceed with the liturgy of the table. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God. Now for those of you who are following with a prayer book, I'm praying Eucharistic Prayer B, which begins on page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ our Lord you have received us as your sons and daughters. You have made us citizens of your kingdom and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love that you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him by being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
And now we pray as the Lord himself taught us how. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. For our final prayer, let us once again pray the collect together and take to heart the words we say. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I look forward for the time that we will be able to be gathering together. That time, hopefully, is going to be much sooner than we expected. You'll be hearing from me during the course of the week, both by email and by hard copy, um, how we're going to start gathering together in worship in person and how we're going to minister together as we once again are called to be a sign of hope and peace in such a troubled and fractured world. I know several of you have told me that you actually bring bread and wine and have it before you as part of the Eucharist. And although I do not consecrate in distance, I do bless. And I ask the Lord to bless the food that you have. And I also ask you, I ask the Lord to bless whatever food you'll have in a meal for later. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of, fruit of, of the fruit of the vine. Grant that we who share this wine which gladdens our hearts, may share forever the new life of the true vine, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, you bring forth bread from the earth and make the risen Lord to be for us the bread of life. Grant that we who daily seek the bread which sustains our bodies may hunger for the food of everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord God, for you have given us the risen Savior to be the shepherd of your people. Lead us by him to the springs of living water. Feed us with the food that lasts for life eternal, where you, O Father, and with the Holy Spirit, he lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. And may God Almighty bless each of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now leave in peace commissioned by Christ to be his sign of his peace and justice throughout the world. Hopefully sooner we will be able to be out there living God's word in public. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here it is.